Good evening, I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News Update. A new medical center in Laurel will soon open to the public. News organizations got a tour of the new facility this morning, which will be part of a comprehensive medical campus serving Laurel and surrounding communities. Over the next few days, we'll give you a behind-the-scenes look at the new University of Maryland Laurel Medical Center. The purpose of this Laurel campus is a full health and wellness campus for the city of Laurel. It will include surgery, we'll have outpatient facilities, we'll have part of our medical group with a lot of medical specialties, whether that's OBGYN, cancer, uh, cardiac services, we'll have a full service emergency department 24-7, 365, as well as all of the wraparound services that you typically see with the health center. The only difference is we won't have full inpatient care. We will have observation care here. You can be observed up to 36 hours, just depending on the insurance company. And then we'll have all of the diagnostics and ancillary services that will support the care delivery for this site. And tomorrow we'll take a look at the new outpatient mental health care services that will be offered at that facility. Well, a former Baltimore Catholic school teacher who was cited in the recent report, Catholic Sex Abuse Report, as having repeatedly and violently abused his victims, has died in prison. 81-year-old John Merzbacher had been serving four life sentences since his 1995 rape conviction. Survivors have testified that Merzbacher brought a gun into school and held it while he sexually abused them. They say he sometimes used a firearm to force male students to rape female students. Merzbacher died Friday at the infirmary at Eastern Correctional Institute in Westover of natural causes. Also, another priest who was cited in a Baltimore Sun investigation will not transfer to a prominent Towson church as planned. Monsignor Bruce Jarbo will remain pastor of St. Anne's in Hagerstown. Jarbo is one of the five priests whose identities were redacted in a public version of the AG's report. Well, a Atlanta man faces a slew of charges in connection with a bizarre kidnapping case on Friday. The suspect is 62-year-old Dennis Bell. According to investigators, Bell was driving a U-Haul truck when he allegedly kidnapped a woman at a convenience store in D.C. Police say the suspect drove around all day with his victim sitting on the floor. She later told investigators that Bell removed her clothing and stabbed her fingers with a pocket knife. State police pulled the truck over, looking like this one here, following a pursuit late Friday night in Lanham for erratic driving and striking of the vehicles. The victim was taken to a hospital, Bell taken to prison, where he is being held. Well, Prince George's police are searching for a missing teenager. This is 15-year-old Abdul Ganyu Bakare. He was last seen this morning at around 8 o'clock at the intersection of Ardwick, Ardmore, and Brightsea Roads in Landover. Police say he was wearing a green jacket and blue jeans. If you've seen him or have any information as to his whereabouts, you're asked to call 911. A new audit reveals there was a lack of oversight and delays of former Governor Hogan's state procurement office. This according to the Daily Record. The report uncovers that Maryland's Office of State Procurement did not monitor the implementation of its system, which resulted in delays and increased costs. The investigation also shows the office did not report all emergency procurement to the Board of Public Works for a year and a half, beginning in September of 2020. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Byron Scott coming up, a breast cancer survivor using her voice to help others. That story and more after the break. Stay tuned. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means we strive to be a nation of limitless possibilities. It's our greatest strength, the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To challenge yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. To be all you can be. To be all you can be. It means never assuming something can't be done. And if it's the right thing to do, never stopping until you achieve it. It's what makes every soldier swear that I will support, support and defend the Constitution of the United, United States. States. This is what we do. Giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training the best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. Because America calls for nothing less. So you can be all you can be. 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 Be all you can be.
Welcome back. A former Prince George's County police lieutenant is sentenced to 16 months in federal prison for tax evasion. 48-year-old Edward Finn was convicted of failing to report more than $1.3 million in income from a security business. Finn admitted that he erased and reset his cell phone as federal agents arrived to execute a search warrant at his residence. As part of the sentence, Finn must also pay more than $367,000 in restitution. And it's life behind bars for four men in connection with the 2018 kidnapping and vicious murder of a Bowie man. The crime happened on June 19th of 2018. The victim, 28-year-old Andre Simmons, was abducted and bound at gunpoint. The kidnappers phoned Simmons' family, demanding a ransom, and the family left $7,000 at a drop-off location. But with cash in hand, the killers shot Simmons 19 times before dumping his body in an alley in southeast D.C. One of the killers was from Bowie. The other three were from the District of Columbia. We're updating now on that fatal crash that occurred in Oxon Hill last week. The deceased driver has been ID'd as 40-year-old Evan Hayward of Fort Washington. The incident happening Friday just before 4 a.m. on the 6300 block of Oxon Hill Road. The collision involved a tractor trailer and a car. The victim was traveling eastbound on Oxon Hill Road. That's when his car collided with the truck that was making a left turn onto Oxon Hill Road from a shopping center. The truck driver was not injured and remained on the scene until police arrived. Hayward was taken to a hospital where he died of his injuries. And Prince George's police arrest a man in connection with the District Heights homicide. This is the suspect, J.C. Littlejohn III. According to investigators, Littlejohn and 28-year-old Dante Williams got into a dispute that ended with gunfire. It happened Saturday morning just before noon on the 6100 block of Blacksmith and Drive. Williams was found outside a home and was taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. Littlejohn faces murder charges. Anyone with additional information is asked to contact police. Well, it's Women's Health Week. CTV spoke with a woman who wants to draw attention to triple negative breast cancer, which is a form of cancer that's more aggressive than others. These factors make the chances of cancer recurring after treatment much higher. Traley Hale is a breast cancer survivor, advocate, and mother of NFL player Keely Ringo. She started the Ringo Family Foundation to bring awareness to the disease and one day hopefully find a cure. I personally had triple negative breast cancer. Our family foundation is the Ringo Family Foundation, and it is designed to eradicate triple negative breast cancer, which is the number one most aggressive breast cancer, and it disproportionately affects women of color. I was 39 years old when I was diagnosed with this triple negative breast cancer, and it was stage 2B. It was in the process of metastasizing. I'm sure so many of you out there can directly relate with the it's not going to happen to me. I'm here to tell you that it does not discriminate. Triple negative breast cancer accounts for about 10 to 20 percent of breast cancer cases, but disproportionately shows up in women under 50, women of color, and those with a certain gene mutation. Well, a new law will double the tax benefit for a family that a family can get for adopting a child. During a bill signing event, a little girl who was once a foster child herself gave Governor Westmore a thank you note. Five-year-old Zahara Jones chatted and gave the governor a card during the signing of HB 180, SB 141. Jones, who is now adopted, extended, attended the event with her father who became emotional, watching his daughter interact with more. The measure will go on into effect on July 1st. And a county school teacher occasionally officially takes a seat on a state oversight authority board. Justin Robinson, an eighth grade educator, recently took a seat on the blueprint for Maryland's future accountability and implementation board. Robinson is also the only teacher on the seven person panel. He was selected by the governor to fill the vacant seat until the June 30th of next year. And stay right there. More news in just a bit. Stay tuned. Hey, sports fans, and coming up soon, head coach of the PGCC baseball team as well as a player talk about their upcoming matchup against Camp Community College. A new era begins as Washington Commanders owner Dan Schneider reaches an agreement to sell the franchise and the result of the matchup between the UMD women's lacrosse team and James Madison. Don't go anywhere. Are you looking for more in this world? Are you ready for something bigger? Then we are looking for you. The big-hearted, the bold, the messy and the gutsy, the teachers, the growers, the builders, the change makers. We need you. We are the Peace Corps. In more than 60 countries, we go all in and all out. We are volunteers, partners, communities, 
working together, living together, bringing our experience, passion, and joy to building a better world together. We are powered by connection. We are driven by purpose. We open our arms, our hearts, our doors, our minds. We share freely and serve boldly. Are you ready to tackle the tough stuff? To go the distance to make a difference? Then we have a place where you belong. The Peace Corps. Join us. Okay, everyone, it's time for your Monday sports page. We'll start with some college baseball. The PGCC baseball team will be in action later on this week as they go up against Camp Community College in the Mid-Atlantic District Championship. The Owls haven't had the best year as they're currently 9-26 on the season. They also lost to the Hurricanes twice this year as well. But despite this, head coach Jordan Martinez believes the team can pull out the win. We're uh, confident. We played them twice already this season. Uh, we lost to them both times, but this time uh, we're a lot better. We're a lot, completely different team than we were uh, a month ago. So uh, we're confident going into it. Uh, we're going to play our best ball out there. I also spoke with infielder Santiago Jimenez, and he also says he believes the team could win due to his pitching and offense. I definitely do feel like this time we come out to win. You know, our pitching staff didn't execute, but every day we're working hard to execute what we didn't do in the uh, last few games. We have a really good pitching staff, and we have a good offense. We just got to put both of them, both of them together. The Owls take the diamond on Friday. Moving on to the NFL, Dan Snyder, owner of the Washington Commanders, announced recently that he has reached an agreement with Josh Harris as well as other partners to sell the franchise. Snyder has owned the Commanders since 1999. Harris had reportedly agreed to purchase the Commanders for $6 billion. Meantime, the UND women's lacrosse team took the field against James Madison yesterday in the NCAA tournament. The Lady Terps had a lead over the Lady Duke Dogs, being up 12-8 going into the final period. But in that final period, the Lady Duke Dogs offense would catch fire, scoring seven times to the Lady Terps too causing them to win 15-14. to 14. The Lady Terps will look to next year to capture the NCAA title. And that is your Monday Sports page. Simon Bucks, CTV Sports. Thank you, Simon. Let's get a quick check now on our three-day weather forecast. Tonight, mostly clear with a low around 50 degrees. Tuesday, cloudy with showers possible, temperatures reaching a high near 77. Wednesday, sunny with a high near 72. And Thursday, sunny and cooler as temps drop to a high near 66 degrees. And now for the community calendar, bring your family and friends out to the 9th Annual Anacostia River Festival. Enjoy local performances, outdoor activities, vendors, and much more. The DC River Fest is this Saturday from one to four. The event is free, just make sure you register. And that's our news for tonight. I'm Byron Scott, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.